Steve's ability to control his movements has been steadily diminishing over the past few years. Steve has ataxia, a condition that affects parts of the nervous system which control movements and balance, namely the cerebellum. So the problem that I see is that when I lift it up, my hand stays steady. And what that means is that my brain can predict precisely the weight that's going to be lifted and so it cancels the activity in my biceps at just the right time so my arm doesn't go up like this. When you lift it up, this ability to predict the consequences of this action is impaired. Ataxia may affect the fingers, hands, arms, legs, body, speech and eye movements. There is as yet no cure for ataxia, nor is it quite clear how it actually affects the brain. The brain sciences are in their infancy. The fundamental properties of the brain, how it controls our movements, how it learns, are just starting to be understood. In Baltimore's Johns Hopkins University, Iranian-born Dr. Reza Shadmer and his colleagues are trying to help discover these laws and through it learn more about the human body and diseases that affect our ability to control our actions. In their lab, engineers, physicists and physicians work together and use tools from robotics, computational neuroscience, neurophysiology and brain imaging to discover the principles of motor control in humans. Um, we study the brain of patients because something has gone wrong and we want to know what is the function of the part of the brain that has been damaged. So by stimulating the head and analyzing the signals that we record in this electrode in the hand, we can understand what's the level of connectivity and how the brain is working at this time in relationship to the hand. They use robotic arms that perturb the patient's movements to see how they react to the error and how much they learn from it. Begin. I want you to reach directly to the box, stop in the box, and then relax and let the robot bring your hand back without letting go of the handle, okay? All right. One of the things that we have discovered is that we can help that. We can make it so that it is possible for them to learn from error through manipulation of the way error is entering the nervous system. And so we hope that eventually that can result in better ways to rehabilitate the patients. In the long run, Dr. Shadmer and his team hope to understand the basic function of the motor structure of the brain and subsequently and to help patients like Steve recover some of their lost motor function this through focused training of the remaining healthy portions of their brain. Kaveh Basmenji, BBC News, Baltimore.